Let's go. Mike, what do you think about the training and the food we need to do and to eat to get the lean physique? Let's talk about the food first. Yeah, let's go. And so the the typical the the typical diet that a lot of people believe that they need to eat uh, is uh, is a lot of meals, a lot of meals every two to three hours in order to gain more size, in order to gain lean muscle. And this is something that I used to read bodybuilding magazines, and they talk about. And you talk to professional bodybuilders, the ones with the most muscle, and they all do the same thing. And so, therefore, I did that before also. And when it comes to food now, I realize before when I ate seven to nine meals per day, I would start off, I would wake up around eight o'clock in the morning, I eat my first meal. And then around 9.30 to 10 o'clock, I eat my second meal. And then around like 12, I already had three meals. And I remember, I remember like my meals were very clean, they're very structured, you know, no, no junk, nothing, just very the same thing all the time, very repetitive. Yeah. And even eating, even eating such a very healthy and very strict diet, I still had to do cardio and I still would train about two to three hours per day to stay lean. And I was thinking, this is just, this is just normal, you know? Now, looking back, I realized that people do not need to eat so much food in order to gain lean muscle. And that when we look at people, most of the people are not having the problems with not having enough muscle. Most people, no matter where we go, we see it. People are carrying extra body fat. It's not the problem is everybody's too skinny and I need more food so I can get bigger. Complete. Everybody is too fat and they are trying to go and lose the weight and then put on muscle. And so that's the biggest thing, you know. The industry made us believe that more food and as often as needed is the way to lose weight and to have muscle. Mm. And now I realize that's not true. You know? Even if you eat um, healthy yeah. food, if you eat too much, even if it's healthy or not, or junk food, you will gain weight. Yes. And um, that's why I experienced to myself when I was uh, at a sports center. I mm-hmm. uh, also tried to eat a meal every three hours mm-hmm. until I discovered an uh, article scientific that said that, you know, you don't need to eat um, every three hours because most of people are afraid that they will uh, be in um, um, catabolic. Catabolic, yes. yes. Catabolic uh, uh, mode. Yes. But it's not true. Yep. We need a lot of time before um, uh, digérer, comme on dit, digérer. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that, but I know what you mean. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the same language, you know? Every time when I used to be, uh, when I used to feel hungry, first thing in my mind I think is my body is breaking down my muscle. Yes. All this hard earned muscle is just being gone, being gone. And I just, oh, I need to eat something. I need something. You have potato chips? Oh, I don't want to eat it, but okay, fuck it. I'm going to eat it. I think that in my head because, and it wasn't because I look at my body and, and realize it's happening. In my mind, I think it's happening. Another thing though is, you know, when we have, when we are lower in calories, our, initially our muscles are not as full, you know, we're like more, we're a little more flatter, but it doesn't mean that we're losing muscle, you know? And so, but when I feel empty, first thing I do is I feel my muscle, like, oh, my muscles feel very soft. I must be burning muscle and I go look for food right away. Now, now I realize, you know, just like what Alex is saying, you're, it, takes a, it takes a while for the body to start to utilize the muscle as a fuel. Because if it uses muscle as the first thing, our body, become, our body is not very efficient, you know? And there is, so much, there is so much other fuel storage that can be used in our body besides just our muscles. And I think that's just something that the bodybuilding industry and fitness industry in general was 
getting people to believe. You know, I think, honestly, in my opinion, uh, food industry was being promoted because now you want to have, you want to be able to eat more often. Food makes more money. You know. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah. One more thing I want to add is that most people and even more as professional um, of fitness teacher maybe mm -hmm. think that their the sport training is less important than food intake. <laughs> I believed it during a, a couple of years of men even longer. Yes, that was true. The fact is that. I found out with my experience mm -hmm. that depending to your type of exercises, if you do it intensely or not, mm -hmm. you get different results. Right. Even if you take the same account of calories, you do a different exercise, type of exercise. Excuse me. You do the same exercise but with different intensity. You have different results. Yes. And uh, that's why I, I experience. I experienced a few, during a few years already, the fasting technique. Right. Consisting on eating one or two meals per day. Yeah. And I just observed my own body that I was leaner, but I didn't lose f muscles. I have the same power, but yeah. I just get leaner. See? Yeah. And maybe I also found some scientific artists, scientific article that say that even if you are in deficit coverage, you can lean muscle too. But depending to if you eat enough proteins or depending also of your training. And if you do intense training, so your body has to be strong. Mm -hmm. How we can be strong? So by keeping muscles, by keeping the muscles. I think uh, that the part about, about saying that Everybody, a lot, well, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people believe, you know, eating diet is more important than exercise when it comes to having a great body, and especially even when it comes to, let's say, losing weight. And I'm on your side on what you're saying about working out is more important. Something, something that I always found is that not only is, not only is what you're saying about the, uh, about the training and the intensity being very important, you know, that's a very, that's a very big aspect of burning more calories, more aspect of using more energy, therefore able to go ahead and burn up the food that we eat. But also the fact that when we are training consistently, our habits for eating is better by far. If we look at people, we realize that we look at the way they eat, and if we look at it, the people that are exercising regularly, generally their eating habits are much better than if you look at people that do not do much physical activities. It's like they don't care about what they eat and how much they eat unless they care about doing something, doing something active for their body. Mm. And I found this to be true too for myself. It's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and take a few days off from exercising, suddenly it's like I'm going to take a few days off from eating healthy too. And then I also eat more. It's not like the exercise activity decrease and then the food decrease. No, it's like activate, exercise decrease, food increase. Yeah. This is a very typical thing, which is why training, in my opinion, is also more important. Not, not more important, but um, the priority. The priority to having a lean and lean physique always do training first because some people go well if i train and i have a bad diet it's not going to work and this is why i tell them i go you're right it's not going to work as good but don't worry about your diet your diet will automatically change and they always look at me like are you sure it's gonna change you know and i go trust me if i was to tell you right now to change your diet you wouldn't listen to me you go, oh, right, right, yeah, yes, this is good. Okay, yeah, okay, and then they eat whatever. But if I convince them and they start exercising, nobody needs to convince them to eat clean. Mm -hmm. They suddenly start to, even if they don't know a special diet, they will just know cake is bad for me and these french fries are not the best. Let me go have a salad. Let me go find, let me, and my intention is to find something better. Of course, because they align their mind to the actions. And yes. They don't want to be um, in, in a paradox between their yes. actions and the mind. 
Right, right. Because they practice already a few times and if you feel it, right? When you practice sport, you feel good. So you want to stay in this state of happiness, on this state of uh, wellness. So you will be looking for, searching for a way to get better. So instantly, your mind will look at for the good food most of times. Yeah. And even so, if you eat sometimes junk food, it's also okay sometimes. Honestly, Mike knows and uh, every night uh, I eat cheese and chocolate. It doesn't sure. make any... It, it's, you know, I admit it, I, I am honest with you, but I... It big works. chunks of cheese, like <laughs> each bite is like this big. <laughs> but I have the six pack. Because I, I find the balance, okay? Yes. I don't say to you that you, you go eat chocolate and go <laughs> eat cheese. Anyways, no. I just say find your own balance mm -hmm. because I found mine, okay? And I found that my type of exercise is okay for me. I train every day. Yes. And I think that this is also a good way to approach, to, to, to try, to test. Because my training doesn't, um, doesn't take more than 30 or maximum 40 minutes per day. Right, right. And it makes the recuperation better for my bouncer. Then I can train mm. more soft times. And if I can train more often, yes. then it depends more calories and my, my balance is, is equitable. I think the balance part is a good, is a good point to bring up. Because uh, a lot of people, they try to look at, they try to count calories. Count calories or they measure the food. And if they are a total beginner, then okay, you know, make it simpler. Don't try to use your own judgment. Try to just follow something that's simple. But for, but for, people, but for people that's been dieting for a while or for somebody to be able to sustain a uh, ongoing, a ongoing healthy way of uh, eating, balancing out their physical activity to the amount of food they're eating is very important. Mm. Because like you said, you found a balance between how much intensity in your exercise, how much time, and also like, uh, how, often, like how active you are throughout the day. And based on that, that part, your eating is perfect for you to have a six pack and be lean. Yeah. If somebody goes, okay, well, let me see what Alex is eating and he eats uh, clean and chocolate and cheese, let me try that. And let's say they don't get a six pack. <laughs> yeah. Then they may go, oh, Alex, what you're saying doesn't work. But then maybe for them, maybe their exercise is not as intense as yours mm. or maybe their, their exercise is exactly the same as yours, but the rest of their activity in the day is less. So therefore, when they come to eating, they have to change it up a little bit. Maybe they don't do the chocolate and cheese just because something else in their body isn't, isn't the same. And I think that's, the, that's very good, you know, to, to have a structure to follow and from there, take out some things, add in some things and find that they're getting results, that results are coming every single week, you know. You, uh, you do training every day too, right? Yes. So how do you recruit, how do you, um, how about your rest? Or do your muscle have enough rest even you train every day? Yeah, so, so the way that I train is I have, I train for 60 minutes. And out of the 60 minutes, only about 12 minutes yes. is actually for resistant training, you know? So even though I train for 60 minutes, if you were to train for 40 minutes, you're probably doing more training than I for resistance, for building muscle. And so that is my standard way of training because out of the 60, I'm doing stretching, meditation, breathing, energy flow, and a lot of other type of things to move things around in my body and create another result. So therefore, the 12 minutes of training, doing just that, I can do it every day no problem. Yeah. It doesn't get my muscle uh, too sore to where I need to take a day off. Because effectively, uh, your uh, time of training is very short but intense. Yeah. I try it, actually. That's why I'm, I'm talking about that. Yes, and uh, yeah. I think that it's very interesting because your training is composed about parasympathetic systems mm -hmm. and sympathetic system too. Yes, yes. Because your, the sympathetic system is, is 
concern about your resistant training and cardio. And, and for the 40 minutes rest, mm -hmm. we work on your system about the power the, about the power sympathetic mm -hmm. system. Yes. And meditation, qigong, mm -hmm. and uh, breathing, deep breathing. Yep. We know that uh, this activity makes your cortisol hormone less. Mm -hmm. And if your cortisol hormone less, then you higher your testosterone hormone. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we all know that the testosterone hormone help you to lead, to keep your muscle uh, big or bigger, maybe. Yes. And that's why may I explain why you can't keep this body. Uh, so I, I also uh, need to add in that my uh, that the standard for me is the 60 minutes in the morning. So. On top of that, when I want to build more muscle, like I haven't, uh, I haven't done a lot of it uh, for the holidays right now, but for, but usually if I go, I want to build more deltoid or more, build more chest, then I would go and incorporate some of the exercises that I do in the 60 minutes, especially basically for the resistance training. I'll just do push-ups or pull-ups or dips or something, you know, or do pike push-ups. And I would just do extra one of those. So sometimes maybe I do an extra 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, most of the time I don't go over 30 minutes, wow. you know. And if I did that, if I did that every day, by maybe like the third day, I will need to go ahead and take a break. So when I take a break, I just don't do the extra. I just maybe only do the 60, right, where there's only the 12 for resistance training. And then that's it. So, uh -huh. so that extra is really... Uh, is for me important if I want to put on more muscle. And that's what I tell people who ask me, Mike, uh, you know, how do you build a body like this? And I tell them, well, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. And if you want to build more muscle, you just focus on the, on building, on the exercises that are building more muscle. If you want to be more flexible, you focus on the exercises more flexible. So for you guys watching, you know, the flow training, the flow training system I created has four different parts and the second part is resistance training, building muscle. The third is for stretching. Fourth is like meditation and breath work. And the first one is for energy flow. So just depending on what somebody wants to focus on. So this way they're able to, if they don't care, they go, I want to be fit. I want to be flexible. I want everything. I don't need anything to be too extreme, but I just want to have everything and have very balanced and spend just 60 minutes. Then I go, okay, just do that. And that's it. But if they want a little extra, they just do a little extra. Yeah. You know? If you're looking for lean muscles, you have to respect logic. Then, okay, you're looking for someone who has a lean physique. Mm -hmm. So, go for exercise who is on this way. I mean, to be to be lean, we have to put, um, we have to choose explosivity exercises. And the body weight training is not the only way to get lean, but is an efficient way yeah. enough to get lean. And even so, it's not enough for you for resistance. You can use band. Yeah. You tried it right yesterday with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the band resistance? So we tried yesterday for a back workout. It feels, it feels very similar. It feels very similar to using, uh, using like, like weighted, like weighted cables, you know, the difference, uh, the difference is with the band, as you pull, as you're expanding the band out, it's harder. And there is, there is more stability that's needed, you know, that's needed to train on, you know, but it's, uh, but the resistance is all very similar. Resistance is still the same, no matter if I use a weight or use a band, except with a band, it's more mobile. You can do it at home. You can do it anywhere. You try the push up bands. That was so, good. So yeah. how was this, this feeling? That was good. That was really good. It was, uh, it allowed me to target, tar target the chest a lot more because when, um, yeah, when we're working the chest, sometimes we could use a lot of triceps or use shoulders. And so to be able to activate the chest more or a, a lot to wake it up, having the bands is a really good way to do it. You know? So how many meals after that mm, do you, do you advise for for my saiyajin so do we need to eat five or six meals to get lean muscles you know
Before, I would recommend more meals, and now I actually recommend a lot less. I would, I've been personally, I've been looking at eating one meal to sometimes two meals. That's my, that's, I've been studying that and I've been practicing it, not consistently, I'll be honest, not yet. And the only reason not yet is because me, just like many people out there, um, we like to eat and eating is a, an enjoyment. And so eating is an enjoyment, it's a pleasure, it's a lot of things outside of just what is needed for the body. But when I started to study into the body and I started to learn where energy comes from and how is the best way to feed our body so we are the strongest, we are the healthiest, we have the most energy in our body and in our mind, I started to find the studies pointing to eating less. And that's why I think intermediate fasting is becoming so popular. Mm -hmm. People are intermediate fasting and fasting and then when people talk about can you build muscle, you know, intermediate fasting, then you see all these bodybuilders and all these fit guys going, yeah, I eat only two times a day or I only eat in this window and they're huge. So it's, it's possible and it's being done currently right now. So that's why, that's why I would recommend eating the least amount, yeah. you know, and again, um, it's very important to be able to, to, uh, to do something that's sustainable, mm. that's sustainable, that can be, so if you're eating, let's say five times a day right now, I would say try to cut down to three times a day. Mm. And then from the three times a day, see if you can cut down to two times a day to where maybe for breakfast, you skip breakfast and you, you maybe eat a lunch and a dinner, you know, and then eventually if it feels comfortable, try eating one time a day. You know, and I know it sounds, it could sound very surprising. Oh my God, I'm going to starve. But, you know, something that I learned before, when we have the feeling of, um, of hunger, when we have the feeling of hunger and a feeling of emptiness, this doesn't mean that our body has no fuel. It just means that our stomach is empty. But we have to remember that there is fuel in the muscles. There's fuel in the rest. Look at how big our body is. This is not the only fuel tank. That's the thing. There's glycogen in our muscles. There is so much fuel in our blood that even though our stomach is empty, and that doesn't mean it's completely empty. Just like if you don't eat, you will still poop every day for about two to three days. No eating, you will still poop. Why? Because just because just because we think there, there's nothing in here doesn't mean that it's completely empty. If we go and look, there's still things deep inside. And so therefore, we're I'm telling people is disconnect the fact that your stomach is empty and that you have absolutely no food and no energy. That is not true. Mm. Separate that out. Start practicing on having an emptier stomach. And then whenever you really need to eat, eat a small meal, and just enough so this way you're able to have a little bit and then be okay. The biggest thing is to let go of eating to feel better. Let go of that because in reality our body doesn't need so much food. The only reason why people eat so much, you know, is because it makes them feel good, not because our bodies actually need it. And when we start to realize that, we start to be able to be more productive like we save time in a day. You know, I, I shoot it a lot of videos with my, with my friends. Yeah. And on the day, I ate on, on the lunch. For the yeah. lunch, um, I was so <laughs> unable to do anything because all my energy is concentrated on my stomach. Yeah. To, for the digestion. Yes. And uh, I was uh, not productive. Yeah. Uh, I constat that I observed myself that all the videos I do on my channel, I always do that without any things on my stomach. Right. And I'm right. more efficient. Yeah. I'm more. Uh, I'm speeder. Yeah. I have more power on my muscles. Right. Then I don't say to to everybody to have empty stomach during all the days. I just say that sometimes reduce your your meals. May, may help you to get more intentions for your brain too. So you, uh, you, eat, you eat one time a day usually, right? 
On the night, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but sometimes I ate two, two times. Yeah. But the first, the, the, the first times, I only ate you no know, fruits or something like easy to to uh, digest. To digest, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Then on night, I can be uh, again in uh, without anything, you know, on my empty, and yeah. then I can train. Yep. With this, with this uh, state. Yes. It makes me feel better and. I, my body products hormone, which burning fat, burning fat. Yeah. No adrenaline and adrenaline. Yeah. Because I'm in state of empty stomach, you know. And you train in the, uh, do you like to train in the evening time? I, m nowadays I train on evening times. Yeah. Sometimes on big nights. Yeah. I, I don't concern, I don't advise this, uh, my type of, my type of training on night, but this is my, it, by my balance, actually. Yes. Because yes. all the day I'm working, I'm thinking about writing new videos and things like this. Yes. If I eat, I will be more, not that much pro productive. Yeah, and I used to believe that, uh, that we have to have food inside our stomachs in order to go ahead and train. And if we, don't, if we train without food, again, I must be burning muscle. And so now, every morning when I go and do my training, I, I'm on empty stomach. I don't eat anything. And also, after training, sometimes I still won't eat anything. And I know this will go against all bodybuilding type of uh, mentality for following nutrition rules. And the thing is, you know, as we, as we evolve, new information is coming out. And if we look back 10 years ago, if we said this, people will go, nuts. They will go crazy and everybody will be like, hell no, 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 that's, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. Now, people watching this, there will be people go, oh right, right, yeah, so-and-so says that too and they say that too and they say that, yeah, yeah, and I read, I read about that. And our bodies didn't change from 10 years. But the information and the understanding of our body has changed. And to be honest, it will continue to change. We will have a deeper understanding of our body as time goes on. So, so right now, if this sounds you know, very new, it's okay, you know, it's okay. There's a lot of new discoveries happening with our bodies. And this is something that you can test out, test out for yourself. Yeah. And I would say, you know, take account what we're saying. You know, Alex has been training for a long time and so have I and try it out and don't just take our word for it try it out but here's the tip don't just try it for three days or one week and then go okay i tried it and uh i don't know i guess it don't work no no you have to really give it a shot commit commit to it commit to it and give it a shot for at least one month if not longer you have nothing to lose but you have a lot to gain into it because the benefits of eating less food, tremendous for your body because you have less food to constantly need to burn so you will get leaner faster. Also, you will feel light on your feet. You know how like we feel, we eat a lot and we feel heavy, sluggish and tired. You don't have any of that. You're alert, your mind is clear and also you spend less money. Let's just be honest. People used to complain all the time. They probably still do. Bodybuilding costs a lot of money. Eat healthy costs a lot of money. Well, if you eat less, it, you will save money. And also time. I used to have to spend so much time eating and I started to practice eating very, very fast. So this way I don't spend as much time. People would sit there and because I just, I'm like a machine. I put it up to my mouth and I just do this. I shovel it into my mouth and I would chew maybe like three to five times, swallow. <laughs> swallow like a machine and I'm like done I'm like okay I'm ready they're like you it, it took you like maybe three four minutes and you're done with a full meal uh-huh yeah and I had to do it because I ate so often but people usually don't eat that fast and they spend so much time eating and it's distracting you're working working and suddenly you're hungry you eat you come back you have to think about what you're doing again so there's so many benefits to eating less you know so try it out Yes, and just one more thing I want to, to, uh, to say is to focus on the food who, um, which give you good calories. Also. Good calories come from vegetables mm -hmm. and from fruit. 
and from good proteins, good lipid. We did a, a complete video with my friend Damien, who is a doctor. So I suggest you to look at this video if you want to see uh, to see our better, bigger information about what I mean about the good calories. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. of course you can also have some pleasure and have empty food, empty calories to to for your mind or for your pleasure. But most of them must be must uh, be um, good calories for 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 your body. I think so. Yeah, having um, having nutritional dense is much better. You know, having nutrition in the in the calories. And uh, I think uh, another thing is to is a mentality that I use for eating is you should feel you should feel better you should feel better after you eat than before you ate. You know, someone goes, "Oh man." I feel like I need to eat, I'm hungry, I feel like my energy is low. Okay, well then you should eat so this way after you eat, you're, you will feel better and your energy will be higher. But then so many times people will go ahead and eat and then afterwards their energy is lower and they feel worse. They feel tired, the energy is low, they have now cramps and bloatedness. So that doesn't make any sense if food is supposed to go ahead and enhance your life. So this is because number one, people are overeating and also number two, they are eating foods that doesn't digest well in their stomach. And so while there are, um, there are so many healthy foods to go ahead and eat, I would recommend just sticking to always whole foods, natural foods, you know, like what Alex is saying, vegetables, fruits, nuts, oils, you know, and I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat, but if you do, it's all good, but stick with clean and non-processed foods. That's like the staple. And also making sure that even though the food might be non-processed, it might be like natural foods, but not all combination of food is the best. The way you know, try something. If you eat and your stomach is bloated, you have gas, you have pains and cramps, maybe 30 minutes to an hour after you eat, then look at what you're eating and don't mix those combinations together because it's not just what you eat, it's also how your body digests the food. So choose good calories, reduce your meals if you can, and care about the intensity of the exercises. Mike, yes. thank you for your sharing our information. Peace and soy. Thank you. Ciao.